increase our faith that the apostles demand from Jesus. And this implies that they realize they have faith, but it's weak. And the Lord can make it grow. Jesus' parables tell us that even a little bit of faith, God's supernatural power can do what is impossible to us as human beings. The prophet Habakkuk, whom we listened to in the first reading, stresses the power of faith as well. But he also gives us another angle concerning this gift of faith that we receive at baptism. Just a little context, Habakkuk, the prophet, lived in the 6th century B.C. when Israel had been conquered by the Babylonians and the majority of the Jews had been deported, exiled from their homeland. And it was as if a hurricane like Ian uh, had swept over not just one city, but the entire country wiped out. The Babylonians wiped out the, the buildings. They burned buildings. People died. Um, and so he feels the pinch of poverty and destruction. And he does the most natural thing in the world, he complains to God about it. Lord, how long? So this is going on for a long time. Israel is not being restored to their country. I cry for help, but you do not listen. And God answers Habakkuk by telling him to have faith. He promises that he will act. And he will restore Israel's fortune. Even though at the moment, it appears that He's not listening, or he's not present. He encourages the, them to have faith. And it's that aspect of faith which is to make an act of trust in God, despite the appearance that he's absent. If it delays, he says, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity. But the just one, because of his faith, shall live. If you have never been in a position when your faith has been tried, when things have been happening in your life, or you see things happening to other people like this, um, it'll come. And when you see so many injustices around you, so much evil around you, even if it isn't directly at you towards other people, it's happening the hand, at the hands of some people towards them. When there appears to be nothing that you can do but trust God, make an act of trust in Him and continue to be faithful. Or abandon your faith. And you choose then to go to your knees and pray more and trust in the Lord. I've noticed uh, as I've gotten to know you here at Our Lady of the Lake in the last two years how much this kind of faith you have. Now in the beginning I didn't recognize it at first because I was looking at what's happening out there and uh, back in the, the same things though are happening today that are happening back in 2020. But I've noticed that you're relatively peaceful despite the injustices towards you and in the world, trusting in God while acting faithfully. And I'm also being impressed this morning that all of you are at church despite the Vikings playing right now. <laughs> Anybody know the score? No, just kidding. <laughs> Um, I have saw more people at 5 o'clock Mass last night than I have since I've been here. <laughs> and, you know, it's, yeah, it's great. I came to church, you know. This Sunday we pray for the impossible, or what appears to be the impossible to us. Uh, this pro-life weekend, pro-life Sunday, the greatest social injustice of our time. 
the restoration of legal protection for the unborn in our country and in our state, that it will be more acceptable to support women and men who are faced with an unexpected pregnancy for better options besides abortions, and more acceptable to offer and seek healing for the post-abortive. And we continue to act in peace despite the odds being against us. There are many injustices in the world that may not be righted until the resurrection of the just, until Jesus' final judgment on the world. In the meantime, we pray like the apostles. Lord, increase our faith at least to the size of a mustard seed.